let's uh, get started. Welcome everyone. The so today, uh, uh, my name is Juni Hu. I'm going to give a tutorial on code Nama. and uh, you, you, all you, most of you know that code Nama came just out of Meta in on August twenty four. So it's very new. It's uh, like only two weeks. But uh, we felt there are a lot of breakthrough. I think there's a lot of breakthrough in terms of performance, in terms of how they implement this uh, code NAMA. And, and you will see that in our presentation. And also, um, I will give you, show you the code. Actually, we steps, uh, I, will, I will step through a notebook so you can see how that works. And I, and I see some new faces uh, today, um, new members. So welcome to our Air Frontiers Forum. We basically meet, uh, we used to meet every two weeks to talk about the cutting edge papers. Sometimes we have speakers from Google, from uh, from um, OpenAI to give a talk here. Um, notebook, uh, I will not share. Uh, someone is asking me. Uh, so far, uh, notebook, I will not share. Uh, uh, because uh, still there's some code I'm working on. All right, so let me uh, put in the presentation mode. Just uh, let's get started. Um, and before before I begin, any announcement, any questions? So in the past, when we do in-person meeting, we have uh, we have uh, uh, people who are hiring who have activities they they can in the beginning of the meeting to make some announcement and i remember um last time someone wants to announce their jobs but i said normally we do that in the beginning so if you want to do that you can um unmute yourself that's just yeah hi good. yeah hi Go this ahead. is uh hi this is nilesh uh uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. Actually, uh, I'm uh, looking for some collaboration to run a proof point with uh, large language models for uh, one of the startups that I'm uh, consulting with. So uh, it'd be great. I can put my uh, email in the chat and it'd be great yes. if someone wants to reach out. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to put uh, your contact in the chat for for everyone. Yeah, we, we encourage people to collaborate. And uh, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm starting a new community in Discord. We can start to um, talk to each other uh, offline uh, after this. Any anyone else? Uh, yeah, a quick one. Uh, hi, I am I am the Brag. I um, uh, uh, I'm an expert. Have been uh, around for a long time. You can look me up on LinkedIn, the Brag Banerjee. I have started an open source uh, project for uh, for accessing and understanding SEC filings by um, all publicly traded companies. The project is Open XBRL, Open X-Ray, Bravo, Roger, Lima. Uh, you can ping me. I will put my LinkedIn uh, in the chat. Um, um, yeah, that's all. Okay, great. Thank you. Definitely, yeah, follow up on, on LinkedIn and, and on the chat. All right, so let me, and we all still have a chance in the end, we can also talk too. Let, let me share my PowerPoint. Um, so two things are interesting. One is understanding what exactly they're doing. Secondly is uh, see the code in action and you can actually use it. The, so let me put in the presentation mode. All right, so, um, oh, I, I normally put the paper in the first page, um, but uh, everyone understand that this is a new paper and also in their blog, they talk about the code NAMA. So the citation I want to put here. Mm, so today um, I normally in that uh, second, first page. But uh, uh, since we are going to talk about the code NAMA, let me first introduce NAMA. 
Nama came out of from Meta in February this year. It's very new. Um, with a six months six months uh, um, age, and uh, it's very exciting because uh, number one is open source; everyone can use it. It allows commercial license. Secondly, is uh, the performance is actually approaching uh, the some established large language model. So that is uh, that makes people excited. And uh, so if you look at the graph here. What happens is people notice that even though you use with a very small language model in the past, a small language model never performs as well as a large language model. Um, that's why GPT continue to increase their size from like GPT-2 is 1.5 billion, GPT-3 is 175 billion, and then GPT-4 is actually 1.7 trillion. And that's people estimate how, how large GPT-4 is. The, we, most companies don't have a resource, uh, even want to do pre-training uh, on small data set. So the, uh, the, the whole new direction is uh, can we reduce the size and still achieve the same performance? What the people, what they found is if we um, use a small model, but we use a lot of tokens. So meaning that in the training data, you go through many, many uh, tokens. The, the, if you triple or double the tokens, you 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 can achieve uh, almost the same as you double the size or triple the size. So so the token size makes big difference in the performance. That's why uh, Nama uh, you try to uh, actually uh, that did the the, mo the largest uh, like a collection training data set is one point four trillion tokens. And then they haven't even reached the limit, right? If you, you see 1.4 trillion, the, the performance still, the error rate still decreased. The, so that's one thing about NAMA. Secondly is the NAMA use a decoder only transformer architecture. Um, in my workshop, I mentioned, we, we actually went in detail about the decoder the architecture. The, then in the modif, uh, there are some modification in terms of architecture. So first of all, NAMA use, uh, put a layer normalization before the attention layer and before the linear layer. You, they, in the tradition, in the classical transformer, the first transformer paper, we, we have attention layer and then, then um, normalization layer. That's a typical. So they reverse the order and the same as GPT-2, GPT-3, they all did this. Uh, Google, Google's Palm, still use the classical uh, order. So that's different. Secondly is they use the so-called SWE glue activation function. Uh, we talked about it in uh, our previous meetup. Essentially it's combining, uh, it's a special activation function that has uh, invented recently that has a lot of good properties. And uh, thirdly, a very important uh, uh, feature I didn't uh, emphasize before. I think today we are going to do Go a little deeper is a rotary position embedding, and that they this actually um, before when it first came out it did, it didn't get much attention because uh, we we have a position embedding uh, in the first uh, transformer paper that's a fixed embedding. Then we have uh, the uh, the learned position embedding in the later in the GPT. So we didn't pay attention because we thought that the weights can be learned. Uh, for for every position, but uh, introducing rotary position bedding actually has uh, uh, some advantage, and we will talk about that. So so Nama has uh, this innovation. Then uh, what is Nama two? Nama two just continue because we see one point trillion is give us a very good performance, and then why not continue to add more tokens? So Nama two has two trillion tokens. And since now they have way more tokens, the performance, uh, it showed that they actually, uh, first, uh, um, the difference between NAMA2 and NAMA is uh, the context length, the input sequence, how much you can enter the input also doubled. The, the token increased by 60%. The, um, then you have, uh, the size so number two inherited from number one except that the 34 is slightly different from the 33 and then 70 billion uh, so number uh so number two we we talked about the last 
um, the week uh, before two weeks ago in this meetup. So we have we talk about uh, number number two and and uh, so if you want to know more about that, we feel free to contact me or um, discussing our Discord channel. The so what's interesting is uh, what get everyone excited is uh, number two has a um very good performance. So it, uh, on the re left side, I'm here showing some benchmark. All these benchmark are some academia test, right? Um, the um, GSM 8K, those are academia tests. And then there are some tr classical tests, classical classical uh, tasks, like a trivial question answering, natural questions. Those are uh, very like classical for any question answering chatbot they want to test on those data set. And then uh, uh, human eval, eval is uh, a uh, data set for testing coding to generate code. And, and it's originally um, designed by OpenAI when they when they actually uh, introduced the first code generator codex. So, so that become a standard evaluation data set. And then for big bench hard, uh, the um, questions that are very hard for large language model, but easier for human. So they particularly bring that up to see how your the, this new language model can uh, do in that case. And uh, now we compare NAMA2 is at the last column. And then you can see the size of NAMA2 is way smaller than GPT 3.5, which is chat GPT. GPT 4 and the Palm. Palm is the uh, behind the barb. <clears throat> so the uh, and actually, uh, Bard uh, Bard's model in, improved beyond the Palm Palm uh, Palm. They have a Palm version two, so that's what's behind the uh, bar. The so number two uh, achieved almost just a one percent difference from uh, ChatGPT, and uh, in in terms of the academia questions, it's also very uh, a point point three difference from ChatGPT. And it's a, it's a, its size is less than half of the ChatGPT model. However, there's one area number two didn't do well is in the coding, and the, this this is a, uh, this implies that inside the ChatGPT they in, they incorporated both the language model for trained on human text and also their internal codex model, the the, the which later become copilot. So the uh, they have very good uh, code generation model inside the chat GPT. So number two is not so well, uh, didn't do so well in the coding side. However, code NAMA, even with a small uh, half size model, 34 billion, uh, uh, actually surpassed the chat GPT. This is very exciting, right? So basically what it means, you can take a very small, pre-trained model and uh, and then somehow fine tune the own code, and then you can actually beat the today's very large language model. And so, so certainly it's not, still not as good as uh, GPT-4, but we are, this is al almost good enough for most people to use. So this is what's very exciting about the code number. Now, what is a code number? So let me introduce code number. The uh, when you we have a number two, we talk about what a number two is. Uh, essentially, it's the that kind of uh, decoder only transformer trained on two trillion to uh, two trillion tokens with some special activation function, special position embedding, and uh, uh, the third one, the three special things. The third one is a uh, normalization uh, location where you do layer normalization. So we 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 actually went through the basic all this basic concept in our workshop. The so the now uh, if we look at a code number, yeah. Oh, okay. Do is there questions? Uh, okay, I will answer question at the end. The so the code NAMA is taking the two uh the pre-trained NAMA two, add on top of that five hundred billion tokens, 
uh, all public available uh, on the internet, the public tokens. Uh, and then they use so-called infilling prediction to fill in the code. Uh, I will explain that. They also use uh, instruction fine tuning to do a further instruction tuning. The, so the uh, first let's try to understand historically, um, maybe I think it's a little confused. I don't want to, this is the dates. These are the years when they are invented. So maybe I will remove this just for you to get a context. The alpha code uh, was early 2022. Then star coder is this year. The codex was 2021. Code Nama is this year. So the, um, put in the presentation. Uh, there are two ways to do to to build a code generator. So, um, we know that uh, generating programming language programming language is very similar to human language. It, it, if you uh, all of you start this uh, computer uh, or write a code, you understand that the, there is a compiler, there is a uh, interpreter. So essentially, it's, there's a grammar for for code. So code is almost like a human language. If we build a large language model, it should suppose to also work for a human code. The, but when, in, when people first design in DeepMind, first introduced alpha code, they uh, thought maybe uh, chewing that on human language would contaminate how you build, how you actually write a code like C++, Python, they, they have very different logic, different grammar. So they didn't train that on a natural language model, a natural language text. They directly train on code, the GitHub code. And similarly for Star Coder, which is an open source, uh, one of the largest open source effort to, to train a code generator, uh, also released early this year. Uh, I think in May this year, quite new. So Star Coder, if you search on uh, GitHub, you can find their source code. They uh, they trained on the stack, which has one trillion tokens, all the code uh, related to coding. So both are uh, taking the route that we, they don't want to use uh, uh, the actually pre-trained language model. On the other hand, the first the codex uh, from OpenAI uh, was based on GPT-3. And then today's uh, code NAMA was based on NAMA2. Both are trained on human language uh, over many, many human to uh, language tokens. So, so these are two different approach. What we see is that is, uh, today's paper, the code NAMA demonstrate, uh, uh, build your code, uh, code generator on top of a natural language model. Uh, it doesn't hurt you. It, in fact, it actually improved the performance. So, uh, so instead of do the whole complete pre-training on the, the code, you can actually take a human, take a large language model, and then do a fine tuning or additional fine tuning, and that's sufficient. That's what uh, that's the major conclusion from uh, code Nama, which which is a very uh, I think is very useful, very powerful, because uh, you uh, we we do want to take advantage of information. Uh, all the effort has built us uh, in the community in the, from the large language model that uh, uh, people have trained over thousands of machines. The if we don't use that, it will be yeah a lot of waste. So so this is uh, very uh, empowering. Now, how exactly they do the how what are the fine tuning they have done on top of Nama two. So essentially, uh, uh, Facebook uh, Meta released three models, three train, uh, fine tuned models. One is called the code Nama itself. Code Nama, you can see here, it went through two steps. Two steps. One is uh, the in the purple in the purple box, you it it did some in in filling in filling code training on five hundred billion. Um, uh, I will explain what the infilling training is. It's uh, different from what we know so far. So, so in the 
today's paper introduced the two major new new methodology, and I will so the uh, how we do fine tuning. It's not completely new, but it's only one or two years old. So in filming, we remember bird use a mask language model. So mask language model is a way to train an encoder based, uh, train an encoder. Uh, basically, you mask certain words, and then you recover those words at the output uh, layer. That's the mask language model. And then for decoder, for GPT, they don't use the mask language model. They use auto-regressive uh, training where you the first word predicts the next word and the first two words predict the third word. So the the this kind of uh, auto-regressive or causal, uh, they call causal language model. Uh, essentially, you, you, you send the complete sequence and the letter word continue to predict the next word. That That is uh, the causal, uh, uh, fine tuning, causal model fine tuning. So today's uh, paper uses infilling, inf infilling training where you actually take the, you remove a certain chunk inside the, inside the, your current uh, input, and the, and the move that to the end of the the sequence, and you are try to recover that sequence, uh, try to recover all those tokens inside. Um, so that's uh, slightly different. I will explain that. Then, so this is uh, uh, how number two, uh, how, uh, oh, actually, since we're here, let me uh, fully explain this so we can come back to this picture. The, so the infilling, basically what it, what it does is uh, you, suppose you have this, uh, uh, this sentence, the big brown uh, dog jump over the fence, and then you, uh, you actually, Tell them there's three words missing. So you mask the three words all together, then and replace that with a token, the mask token. And in, instead, you, you want to recover, not, not in this location, but recover at the end. So when you generate the next mask at, at the end of the sentence, the, the, the decoder should continue to generate additional tokens, which will exactly be the missing tokens here. Right, sounds like magic, but uh, it actually worked. So, so this kind of this is called the infilling causal, and it's called the causal masking. You somehow the mask can be recovered at the end. Uh, that that is uh, very interesting. So, how that works is we can uh, mask a certain portion of the uh, the code. So, so here you have a function. Um, a, a Python code that actually define a function. You take a few lines, you just cut them. Not even uh, very, very neat. Just you, you even cut in the middle. But it doesn't matter. So you take a chunk, and now you they they went away, right? So those those words went away. So you shift everything. So what's remaining is this in word count, right? If word in word count. So you cut after if word. Now you, what everything is missing. Everything missing. The whole thing will be replaced by one mask token, and maybe you mask several segments. So this mask token has a ID called um, a zero. That's the index. And so if you have two masks, you may have a mask colon one. So with that uh, replacement, you you so you see this whole function will finish at a return word counts. Then you put a mask token at the end. Uh, what we expect, what we expect. So the tr this is the train you you can create a training data. So the training data is you. Uh, this will generate all the missing tokens until it reaches this token EOM uh, end of mask. So when it um, and the, this EOM is also auto generated from the uh, decoder. The decoder somehow will see we'll reach to the point that the next token with high probability will be the EOM. So then you know you should stop. So that's how how you recover all those words in in the in the decoder. So so this is uh, this is almost like magic, but uh, it works very well for today's uh, for code Nama. So that is the first thing they did with that 500 billion 500 billion uh, 
token tokens uh, code to do the uh, fine tuning. So this is called a specific fine tuning. Fine tuning with causal mask, and or you call it the infilling code training. Uh, so after that, the, they branch this out into three different models. So for code llama, the the like the original model, we we actually uh continue to do some fine tuning and this fine tuning is also a unique a very interesting innovation from facebook from meta i want to explain what is a long context fine tuning it actually came out in june this year just two months ago from their research group and this is an observation that they found that what is long context fine tuning is uh, remember every large language model specify the length of input uh, tokens, so the input sequence. So uh, the or original bird has only 512. Same thing for the first GPT. Then later uh, we expand to like NAMA has 2,000, then NAMA 2 has 4,000. So you can, you can the input uh, maximum length is a four thousand uh, to uh, uh, four thousand tokens, four thousand nine ninety six something, but but essentially around four thousand. So that's the maximum uh, number of tokens you can send to the transformer to the to the uh, language model. The and the reason is uh, the reason we limited that is uh, the uh, the computation is quadratic in the number of length the uh, input length. So uh, there is a computational limit how long you can send how much tokens you can send each time. However, uh, what did they discovered this this is this paper is cited in today's uh, uh, code NAMA paper. What they discover is when you do fine tuning, you don't have to limit. You don't have to limit it to 4,000 tokens. Instead, you can actually dramatically increase the number of tokens for fine tuning. They increase it to 16,000 in their fine tuning, and they demonstrated that you can potentially increase to 100,000 tokens. That's uh, this is very powerful. So meaning you can pre-train, you can pre-train uh, with very small window uh, windows context. But when you do fine tuning, since fine tuning you do much fewer examples, fewer requiring fewer resource, you can actually increase the number of tokens for for the input. Now, how can we do that? The since we know that uh, uh, the input for transformer is a number of token, every token has a position embedding. The uh, if you change that, you would change uh, a lot of relationship from the pre-trained model, right? So how do you how do you represent the position? It's a it's a key question here, and that is the innovation for today for today's paper comes in, and so today's paper uses so-called rotary, rotary position embedding. Um, in in our uh, workshop, we talked about this. Uh, classical position embedding called the absolute position embedding, which use a sine cosine equation to actually um, calculate at every position uh, i, i, or i is the element. The t, t is the current position. So it, t re, uh, refers to the, the word index uh, where you are in, in the input sequence. Uh, I is so you convert every single position, say position five, into a vector. The vector size will be equal to the size of your word, uh, the whole embed, uh, the word vector. So if the word vector is four thousand, you will generate a, a vector of four thousand for to represent the position five, right? So so inside this uh, uh, position vector you have to fill every element. So the value of every element is defined by this formula. The, so if i equal to zero, meaning the first element, you take a sign, use this equation. If i equal to one, which is an odd number, then use a cosine. The, uh, so so this, is, uh, it, this is almost like a, 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 a cycle. It, it basically bring back the, relative distance between words. Um, so that's the original motivation. 
And then in the later implementation in BERT in GPT, we removed the absolute in, uh, embedding. We actually introduced the PRK. The PRK is a, is a you can think about is a, we don't know, uh, we just put the random numbers, uh, the position. We, we essentially, we are learning the vector. We are learning, we are trying to learn the, um, the vector representation proposition. So the WK, WK used to only multiply. Uh, so we, we derived the query key value for attention layer uh, with this, uh, this weights. So WK times X uh, used to be K equal to WK times X. But now it's uh, WK times X plus P, meaning inside of the weights, we also assign weights to the position. So we are learning both uh, word embedding. We, are, uh, we learn the word uh, has embedding the weights. We are learning through the, the whole um, language model. We are also learning the embedding for the position. So essentially uh, when the learning finish, we are update, we have this WK will give us uh, some segment will corresponding to the word, some segment will corresponding to the position. So. So everything's learned. We don't have to worry about how we convert the position uh, embedded. But uh, today's paper uh, basically said we should go back to the this rotary. I uh, have a typo. But anyway, the um, we we should go back to the rotary position uh, representation. So essentially, it's 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 an angle. It basically is like a rotate rotate the current. Uh, um, Based on where you are, you you did a uh, angle rotate, and then basically try to see in the in this cosine sine uh to this space where they are located, and so here this is just one example. If if my current x uh, uh m is the current position, so you can think about the as the uh, t uh, in the previous uh, representation. So x t, so basically your current uh, token has a two dimension x1 x2 so this is indicated just a 2d a 2d vector for for the word so uh, that's xm and um, if you want to convert that to k so um for the next layer for the attention layer how do we get the how do we uh, transform the word into into k into the uh, query key value, so this is the key. The Instead of using W, as we showed earlier, we just do the W uh, uh, linear weights. The We multiply by this cosine, cosine M theta minus sine M theta, uh, uh, cosine and the uh, and, uh, sine. And the inside the cosine is uh, the current position times a constant. Uh, the constant the theta is in fact is design. It's very similar to in the original transformer paper. The the theta should be something inside that is uh, similar to k divided by ten thousand to the power of two t minus d. In fact, in today's paper, uh, they made another innovation. Is they said, uh, before we divided by ten thousand, that actually limited our range. That limited our uh attention range. So essentially, if you say 10,000, meaning the maximum attention you can pay attention is 10,000 position away. But what if I my input has a much longer sequence? I have 100,000 tokens in the input. So they actually dramatically increase this, this constant. The constant become 1 million. In, they actually tested uh, with constant 1 million. The, uh, they get actually better performance. So they they can capture the attention in a very far away world, right? So the uh, no matter how long the sequence is, you you your last token you generated, it's somehow still associated with the first token. So by the time you generate uh, the ninety nine thousand nine hundred uh, tokens, you still somehow remember the first word you generated. So this this token attention. Uh, it's very powerful, and that is introduced through this uh, ro rotary position embedding. And uh, so, if you want more details, I, I recommend a, a paper, the pay original paper, 
uh, that's cited um, by this paper. So that that uh, give us the understanding about why the position uh, it basically allow this property allow us to tune a much longer sequence in based on a very fixed uh, a pre-trained model, the fixed token. So this is a uh, very interesting. That's why uh, they can handle a lot of code in the, particularly in programming. The coding sequence is much longer uh, because you have so many tokens in the code. And uh, this is also very useful. Is uh, uh, you can think about uh, if you you have a team, you have many projects, right? You can actually throw in all different uh, dependent dependent pro uh, code, and they just concatenated them to to tell the machine that this is the context. This is the what the dependency of this code uh, based on how is that related to other code. So so the longer context, the more information you can capture. This is uh, very interesting. Then um, if we take a look at the uh, performance, so this is, uh, we, I talk about, oh, let me, let me go back to the, to this picture. So I talked about uh, the two major innovation for code Nama is uh, one introduced the also masking uh, using infilling, infilling is uh, take out, the uh, inside take uh, take out and then fill it back. And so infilling code training. Second is uh, uh, use a rotary position bedding to allow long context uh, to fine tune. And that generated code number. Then they, uh, uh, at the bottom, they did a Python, uh, code number Python. Uh, it's not uh, much difference except uh, they uh, they added uh, they added additional Python code here, one hundred billion. So in this part, they do the classical traditional auto uh, auto regressive uh, learning, continue to to learn, and then uh, after that they apply long context fine tuning to twenty billion Python tokens, and that generated the, the Python. Uh, called the Nama Python. The and the the, the third uh, third model they released is called the uh, Code Nama Instruct, and here they use the so called instruction fine tuning. Um, we we know that the um the current way we are doing fine tuning essentially is uh, almost like a causal it's causal model. Essentially, we send a long sequence. And somehow we are learning the relationship between the first token, next token, and then the third token. So we are learning the sequential information from the to uh, the sequence, but there's no instruction. So so the instruction fine tuning is different. Um, this is uh, uh, introduced from the uh, chat GPT from after GPT-3 is called instruction learning, where you, you give a prompt and then you give a task, and then you see what is the output. So, so essentially, there's instruction, there's a problem, and there's a solution. Somehow, when you send this together into, into the system, they, they will learn about this instruction. So instruction is very powerful to guide, to guide the, uh, the language model to generate something very specific. For example, if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, tell the language model to always uh, like translate French to English when they see the command translate, translate fr from French to English. So you will have a few examples. You give them this instruction and then uh, when they actually see in the future someone else wrote this, they will do the same thing. And so so instruction that, so they collected uh, uh, some instruction data but uh, they first get some human instructor data from the pre other people's research uh, data set. So there are some human instruction and the human generated code. So those are very good examples. Then they also did some self instruction. So self instruction is uh, they use the Lama 2 to generate the instruction itself. So, so basically, it's like uh, uh, you are instruct someone to to build a code, right? To uh, to write a code. You you give an exam. You give a coding exam, and in the coding exam, you have a description about what the person should do, and that description is your instruction. 
to the computer say uh, I'm going to say design uh, design a, a, a binary tree to to complete uh, this task so this this is your instruction um and then you see the uh, you introduce you introduce uh, uh, some initial conditions some uh, basically the problem and then you see finally the the program generates some answers so they first ask uh, NAMA2 to generate a bunch of instructions to, for certain problems. Then they uh, train the code NAMA to, to get the best solution. So the, that's called instruction fine tuning. All right, so I think I covered all three models. Then um, if you look at the performance, uh, certainly, for the current uh, coding evaluation, the, uh, which is uh, everyone use called the human evolve, uh, GPT-4 still does the best. GPT-4 67% uh, pass one, meaning the first one pass is correct. The, you, you potentially can generate 10 candidates or just one candidate. The, if you only allow one candidate, uh, how much, how, uh, how good it is. The, Remember, we talk about the chat GPT 48.1. The NAMA, code NAMA, uh, without the instruction uh, training is 48, but with actually with instruction it gets lower. Maybe it's confused. But the Python one give 53.7. And then for another task, this is uh, most basic uh, Python programming, MBPP. The, uh, GPT-4 didn't have a result, so chat GPT has 52.2, but NAMA instructor uh, surpassed that, it's 57. And then we have a multilingual human evolve. It essentially is a multi-language, multi-programming language, language uh, code. The Also, code NAMA is the best among all the known. So, so this is very impressive performance. Uh, even though they are about 14% behind the GPT-4. Uh, but uh, notice that they are only 34 billion. GPT-4 is a 1.7 trillion model. It's so much, much larger. And uh, certainly, we, this, this uh, rule still holds. The larger model, the, the better performance it could achieve. So the, uh, we haven't reached the saturation of the model size yet. All right, so so that is uh, the summary about the, the paper. Now I'm going to show you the code. Okay, so there are a lot of questions. Um, I'll come back if there's a question. Let me show you how it runs in in my in the notebook. Let me... So uh, very similar to uh, very similar to uh, th there's a GitHub. So here, if you go to here, let me actually just show you here if you see. In in the GitHub in the Facebook research, there's a code Nama repo. Inside here, you basically can see the current release. Right, the, there's three. Can people see this page, the Facebook page? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes when I show one uh, tab, uh, the other tab, I just want to make sure. The, so in the in this here, you you get a different models. Uh, so you can uh, do a git clone on this uh, this repo. Uh, inside here. Yeah, so I, I, uh, you see the example infilling, example instruction, example completion. This is the three kind of training methodology they use. Um, I, I'm not going into detail here. The, so let's come back to the code. The, normally when I run, I, uh, as a good practice, if you do in Google Colab, you always, you always have your, uh, the drive mounted to the current, to your own directory so that anything you build will be saved in your own directory. So I'm going to, uh, this is, uh, 
from my coach.ai account. So I'm going to uh, mount this uh, Google Drive directory. That should, uh, why does it take time? Oh, it's doing, okay. Now the, uh, now what we are going to do is to clone the uh, GitHub. Since uh, I, I also put the if condition, if I already clone, I don't have to do it again. Uh, so this will be fast since I already cloned. You see, I'm now CD to this, uh, this directory called Nama. Inside here, I'm going to use the download sh the 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 script to download all the pre requirement for code Nama. Um, since I actually already did this is an if statement. If not, you just do the bash. Uh, but this will go through. And then uh, I'm going to do a pip install transformer in in Colab. You always have to install the transformer uh, hugging face transformers uh, uh, each time which is kind of hassle. I, I wish they, since everyone's doing, using Hugging Face, they should have this in their system. And also, also um, this two other package, Accelerate and the Centerpiece. Centerpiece is for the tokenizer. Um, they use the BPE tokenizer. So particularly in the paper, they mentioned that um, uh, byte pair encoding tokenizer. Okay, here is, uh, now we want to get the, um, the, what we are doing here is uh, we actually, I, I should actually comment that out too. So this, uh, I already finished this part. So. Uh, remember right now we are downloading the code Nama directly from Facebook research pay, uh, GitHub. The formatting of their, uh, their model is different from Hugging Face formatting. So what, what we are doing here is converting into Hugging Face, uh, convert Nama ways to HF Hugging Face format. So you need this to, um, yeah. But I'm not actually using it. Uh, so the next statement is the, this one. Uh, so you, first you download this Python, Python file. It's very small. Uh, what it does is you take, a, you, you do the convert. convert. You, you take the current, uh, um, the input directory is the instruct, 7B instruct. And the output will be a hugging face formatted 7B uh, code NAMA 7B instruct. But since I already finished doing this, uh, um, if you didn't, you just use the what's inside the code, and and then we we will load this uh, this model. This model has uh, the name. Uh, we just give the name, so we will load this model. Once we load the model, the uh, this is just the, the device we're using is CUDA. Uh, I want to make sure we are actually using CUDA. Yeah, we are using V100. Potentially, uh, when, when you look at the, the um, runtime type, uh, A100 is the best. Um, typically, you have to have a pro class. I have a pro class account. I can potentially use. It costs uh, uh, your computing units. So very quickly, you will run out of units to use. Uh, the others are much cheaper. So um, for today, we just use V100. That's sufficient. Also check the high RAM. The so here uh the div uh I have some cache. This is just defining my directory. Now the uh in order to generate a code, we need a system prompt. So I gave a prompt to say you are a helpful uh peer coding peer coding assistant is basically sitting next to you to help you to code. So uh, we basically said this is a coding assistant. And uh, we assign some system prompt. So system prompt is just the kill the system what to generate. Now the the actual part is the uh, we also need some other package for the weights. So let's download that. Okay, this is just uh, 
some preference. Is, this is minor. I will quickly go through this one. So, uh, and then we needed to import a torch and the transformers and the tokenizers. These are the typical ones. So now from here, we are actually loading the model. So this is a causal model. So the the code generator, since we are doing, well, I'm do, not doing fine tuning, I'm doing uh, inference. I wanted the code generator to take all the previous token and then do to, um, to generate the next token. And we are also building the tokenizer. The tokenizer give us the number of vocabularies, how, how many tokens, we to uh, basically convert the input into the token IDs. And so the tokenizer we use give us the specific IDs. This will take about one and a half minutes, I believe. Because the model is a seven billion, so it's still quite large. And you can see it use up a lot of memory. And I'm going to show you your resource. So you can see here the, the system RAM. <clears throat> now, first it loads into CPU and then move that into GPU. The uh, our uh, system uh, GP, CPU RAM is 51 gigabytes, so that's not enough. We only have a 16 gigabytes for the for the um, V100. For the A100, you would have 40 gigabytes here. So you see, this is keep increasing. That means we are loading the model into the RAM into the memory. The the model itself is 7B, but uh, uh, depending on how much, uh, what, how many bits, right? We only use eight bit. Uh, one, I, one byte is is eight bit. So that means we will need about seven billion, um, seven gig plus. There's a, also there's additional uh, memory would need. So this is already um, 13 gig already. And that will be, I think in the end, uh, in the GPU, you will have about 10 gig. And it's, so it's very uh, memory intensive. Remember, it's a 7 billion model. It's way larger than GPT-2, not larger than typical model. So not the smallest number model still costs a lot of computing resource. So you see now the uh, the memory in the CPU decrease, the memory in GPU increase. So they are, we are transferring the data into the GPU now. And the GPU stays at around eight gigabytes. So, yeah, so we finished loading uh, because we are using only eight bit uh, to load. The, so that's our computing resource we needed. Let me close this one. And we now want to see what is the maximum position. How how many tokens can I handle? So I'm, I so this basically says we can handle at least sixteen thousand tokens. That's that's for the num code number. Um, and then we define the, all the parameters in this in this definition. We uh, oh, I'm just printing out this already config. So in, in this configuration, you see the there are certain token IDs, beginning of sentence, end of sentence. Those are very important uh, token IDs. And then it tells you what's the hidden size in, in the transformer, 4096. It tells you how many uh, maximum input sequence tokens you can handle. It tells you what uh, um, how many attention heads. So we do multi-head attention. So you divide the attention into into parallel heads that you can calculate. And also the quantization. So we we actually um, not using the full precision, uh, 32 bit. We are, yeah. So so this is the for computing purpose. Um, yeah, so this give you some parameters. Now we want to test and actually run this. So let's, 
that's uh, in order to introduce the sentence, we needed to tell the system the this talk this is used by Lama, so they have a talk, certain tokens. Let's run this. Now, uh, this function generate response is the major function to generate. So, given the user input, what I should uh, generate? Okay. So now, um, uh, just to do a wrapper. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through this. The so this uh, this is all right. So after all this, now I'm at this. I'm displaying the HTML and the so so this is. This is the one I tested before. Let me. Uh... Okay, so you you are only at this two line, right? And we are going to generate the actual code Nama interface, right? So so see, so now uh, I'm going to. Uh, can anyone give me a coding problem? We will ask code Nama to generate. Anyone? <clears throat> you can unmute yourself. Um, maybe generally we can do a, like a depth word search of uh, for a substring in a list of strings or do a depth uh, do a depth first search for what um, um yeah you need a, you, you need some kind of tree um, uh, do a, give a um, simple problem. let's let's see if we can generate anything <laughs> and let's okay. start small. Yeah. Let's do a Fibonacci sequence. What? Fibonacci. Uh, generate, right? Yeah, generate a Fibonacci sequence. Paper. How to spell it? F I B O N A C C I. Yeah, guys, Fibonacci is something you can cut and paste. So this maybe is too the other easy, one. right? Yeah, the other one. Given an integer and compute the number of distinct prime factors. That you cannot can, can, you can you can you oh, I cannot hear clearly. Uh, all right, all right. Let me just do the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So, so now uh, so now you see the uh, system generating its processing, right? And then the it already put the instruction here. You are a peer helpful peer coding assistant. User user command is now is completing this. So we'll see. This may take about one minute. And that what I found is I can actually make this shorter. The, the, the reason is each time they, they assume, oh, they finished. Okay, good. See, and it, not only it's also conversational, they give you, yeah. So let's give it a more interesting problem. Can, can it do things like, um, for example, um, describe, um, uh, design of the system, for example, Facebook database system design. Yeah, but before you go uh, on, uh, ask it to show the uh, code, not just what? generate it. <laughs> you have too many ideas. That's a one person, oh, Amir, let's take your idea. So, yeah. Before you move on, uh, tell it to show the code. Oh, show the code. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, show the code that you generate a uh, Fibonacci sequence, right? Just show the code above or above. That's it. Can you do show different languages? Code. What languages? Above. Well, it She's doesn't not... know above. It, it may be below. It uh, doesn't know above or. Okay, so above. just uh, from scratch, and you can use uh, yeah. Python is uh, has a lot more data, so it can easily do Python. Okay, show the Python code for generating Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, that, let's it... just see if we remember context. Can you do other languages like C Sharp or Java? I think so. Uh, yes, this is just uh, has more info the on the uh, uh, is uh, Lama 7B instruct, so it's multi language. Let's get uh, to generate a fast Fourier transform in C. Okay, sure. Uh, well, why don't you uh, type that in the uh, in the chat and I just copy paste if you have quite uh, example. Um, I, I see it takes more than uh, 30 seconds. The reason is uh, I actually can uh, optimize this. I didn't do that. The, the one of the trick for you to generate faster is in the, um, in the definition of a sequence. You have to divide by four because uh, 
uh, oh, here, max, max document length. If I put a divided by four here, it will be faster. Let me see. If I divide it by four, because now it's 16,000, this will make it a four, 400. So it, it won't go beyond the, uh, yeah, this should uh, slow down, uh, speed that up. Okay, so let me, let me see if that is finished. I'm going to update this. Okay, so here it comes back. It's user pandas. Why? Why? That's weird. So it yeah. doesn't know, remember the context. It's not a conversational. It just, okay, so I'm going to just show the Python code for generating uh, Fibonacci. Right, right. Okay, nice. Sequence. Let's do that. And we can... the Python code for generating Fibonacci. Just copy paste it. Okay, after this, I will run this max, this one I need to run. Yeah, it's gonna so do- once, uh, This will speed up. This will speed up everything. Yeah, so I the people ones should be it. able to answer easily. So now uh, some other folks gave complicated ones. So like uh, given an integer n compute the number of distinct prime factors Pn. So the, we can go to that, but this one they should easily solve the one that we just gave. Okay, so this one, where is it? Still processing. Wow, the the um, it really bothers me. Um, yeah, let's see. I just changed that divided by four. The max lens, the max lens is too long, so that takes too much time. Still, let's see what are the other. Generate a C code for a function. Okay, I will use dance. So let's look at the resources as well. The right now, if you see, if you open the resources tab, we can see how it does in inference time. Compared okay. to compared to Chat GPT, does it have um, uh, hallucinations? Uh, I believe hallucination still happens. Okay, here. The code. This is a code. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, so uh, I I think that uh, sequence also run. Now let me do the C code, right? Yeah, but, so, but uh, before yeah. we lose it, if you can look at the resources, we can see the graph, see how did it in inference versus training. Uh, the resource only shows RAM. You mean here? Yeah, oh, it's right fine. now. See, so it's it's got flat slightly up on GPU RAM. Uh, the, yeah, so not nothing much. Okay. Right, right. This doesn't show as much. But okay. interestingly, it didn't drop. So basically, when it loaded the weights in memory on inference time, nothing got cleaned. Yeah, it has to be there. It's in the run. All the weights are yeah. there. Okay, so now we generate a C code for function takes the input. Uh, input of integer samples generated the fast Fourier transform. Okay. Let's see if this one faster. I I change the max doc length. Maybe it's too late because of the, the max doc length maybe is processed by other functions already. Let's see which function actually used max length. Maybe I have to rerun the function afterwards. Um, okay, so I run this one divided by four. Maybe run this one again. Later, we will run that. This one. This is just displays. So I want to rerun. Where's the where's the solution? Oh, it's it continues. So we didn't lose the printout. Oh, maybe I should rerun this. I should rerun this will be faster. So let's see. Okay. I have a question. It's a C code, see? 
this all the C code. Yep. Is I have a question. Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Yeah. Can I yeah, ask I a think... question? Yeah. Uh, ask uh, ask this or ask me. Yeah, I'm asking question. I have a if I have a digital library, let's say how a couple thousand of digital books, and I want to feed in uh, into this uh, AI for analysis or for research purpose. Is it easy to do that kind of stuff? How easy that would be? Oh yeah, you should come to my talk. That's a separate uh, uh, problem from here. That mm -hmm. is uh, your processing words, right? Your book of words. Yeah, like it's a larger library, electronic books that I want yeah, to feed yeah. in. Yeah, so you create embedding on all your words. So you create, a, you convert all your document into word embedding. So, mm -hmm. and the save that embedding your data set that you can use a vector database to save it. That's a total different topic from okay. today's topic. Yeah. Okay. Does it take a lot of work? But uh, uh, you should come to my talk in two weeks in ACM. I'm giving a talk on building the pipeline, building the pipeline, of including processing documents. Okay. Is that uh, going to be online? Talk online? Uh, oh. I believe they will host both. Uh, it's a hybrid. They will host in, uh, in person. They also have online. Be uh -huh. I believe they have online link. Yeah. And how do I find the link to that talk? Uh, I can I can put it in the chat. Just one second. I can put the, that talk in chat so people can. Okay. That is uh, more about um, building an end-to-end -end solution. So today's no, no, paper no, is the cutting edge. Yeah. Go ahead. It looks it looks like it cut off the code. Is that because you put a limit on the tokens, or is that the end result looks cut off? Oh. Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, probably it's probably exceeded the limit, but yeah, it's it. it oh, not to be. this one. Yeah, so basically, it? it was sixteen k divided by four. It becomes four k. So yeah. Oh, so it's ended uh, here. That is cut off. Yeah, I think so, but that's okay. It's it's. Oh, it's uh, because uh, no, no, four k. This this is like uh, only a few hundred tokens. Has nothing to do with that for four k. So the, the token is the size. Enough. See the whole one page. The whole page is five hundred tokens. If you write mm -hmm. a five page, it's only in like twenty five hundred tokens. So so this is a very tiny number of tokens. This token is at most three hundred tokens. Yeah yeah okay well I, I don't know Some, something cut off but yeah maybe so, so UI 17. cut it off. Yeah. Does, does UI cut it off? The UI, I don't know. Uh, actually, let me rerun this because I did I re, re I rebuild the the max. Okay, it still remembers. Wow, why didn't it make it go away? Oh, the, so it maybe in the display. You're just yeah. displaying the variable, so that has not changed. Yeah, they it's are just the display, so it didn't do. It didn't reload the model, did did it? Huh. Okay, anyway, so, oh, well, maybe I have to, yeah, anyway, but the, this is a demo, right? This is just show you it runs and it works. It, uh, it can do some interesting things, yeah. And it can do C++. I can try maybe one more example. Uh, yes, yeah? We can, uh, how about we do choose something like SQL that uh, we are not sure if it's trained on, something SQL analytics. Uh, I don't, I believe they train on SQL. Yeah, someone want to give me a SQL? If just is, is write it in English. Say that uh, uh, okay. anything. So uh, So what is the SQL statement? No, no, you don't give it. You say in English, ask it to do the SQL. Uh, oh, oh okay. write, a, write a SQL statement to retrieve, to retrieve employee. Employee address or what salary? Yes. Based on salary, based on their, um, based on their age, and yeah. uh, uh, and the location. How about that? Let's see. It's uh, actually doesn't. What do you mean it's based simple. on? Okay. Yeah. 
uh, based on their age and location. Let's see what it says. Yeah, this answers our question. <laughs> so can it? So it's gonna make some assumptions. Let's find out. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Does it create a schema and then go ahead and run the query, or at least construct the query? Is it is it working? It's not even responding. Uh, it, it's dead. What's so, happening? Uh, just do a plus again, yeah, somehow. Let me run this. I run this. Uh, looks like the model died. It's not processing. Maybe we can uh, go back you sell. I believe oh, I, 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 maybe I rerun something cause the cause the crash of something. Um, yeah, all these runs. All these runs. Print. All these runs. So I don't know what happened here. The model is still there. Let's see. Resource. The model is still there in the run. Hmm. Maybe the thing is it's a second model and the second model second model would uh, oh it's not a second model. Oh. That's weird. This send doesn't oh clear chat. Can I clear? Well the button doesn't work. Some, uh... All right, let me rerun. Start uh, because, around. But copy paste your question first before you don't need to type again. Uh, no, that that's easy. That's okay. I have a question. What uh, yeah. what is the Go capability? Ahead. What is the capability in terms of um, uh, intelligence uh, compared to human? You know, like a human um, IQ versus uh, IQ of this entity. Do you know? Oh, that's that's a big question. The big <laughs> it's too big. I don't know. I don't think it's so new. People probably haven't uh, haven't done evaluation yet, right? Essentially, you are asking about it similar to GPT four, right? Right. Is it normal or GPT four? Right. So would that be equivalent to human or or higher? And how many times? You mean skill? Uh, IQ. Okay, okay, that's a question. So they actually like Alpha Code uh, participated in the coding challenge. The what they found is uh, they can do fifty percent. They are comparing to human coders. They are uh, around the average. I think uh, my, uh, that's two years ago. That's twenty twenty one. I think now should be maybe eighty percent. I don't know. Maybe you can. Uh, I think they can do. Just introducing some coding challenge side by side with a human, and they take an average, take the top human, average human, and they are each year there is the organization do that kind of uh, competition. So mm -hmm. you can you can make the, the same like AlphaGo, right? You can you can introduce the the computer coder in there. That's easy to test. Right. So does it depend on a quality of the code that it has been trained on? Or is it depends on purely computational capabilities? Uh, it's crucially depends on the code. So that's why they they train on so many codes. So we are back. And so we are doing SQL, right? So create a SQL statement to retrieve to retrieve employee salary based on age and location. Okay. Yeah. Can can we ask something more complex? Like for example, write a database schema for Facebook, similar like Facebook website to write SQL. Then it will generate two two thousand tokens that will be waiting here. <laughs> That's a Oh, I don't know how many tokens. So, okay, here, now it worked. I made into max token, for, now it's 4,000. This will be faster. And the, the, the upload file token generate. All right, is this correct? 
who asked for oh, the SQL oh, token yeah. earlier. That, 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 that's decent, but uh, that's a good start. <laughs> so it can write a SQL code. Yeah. So um, so it's a good coder. I mean, we, we trust, uh, we know Copilot, we know uh, GPT-4. GPT-4 is a better coder than uh, code Nama. So that's uh, pretty given. Uh, okay, so, uh, so yeah. Uh -huh. I actually have a question. Uh, like Junling, how did they accomplish the long context fine tuning? I mean, are in the input to the transformer, are, are in the size of this matrix is fixed? I mean, we actually talked about n cross d, for example, right? So suddenly, for the long context fine tuning, it looks like they went from four k to sixteen k. How did they accomplish that? Um, so uh, as I mentioned, they they are not using fixed position embedding; they use a rotary position embedding. So, but, the, but but the position embedding is simply added onto the embedding of the input, right? So that's all they do. You, you just take the position embedding and then you and then you just simply add it with the input embedding provided by the embedding layer. So right. yes, yeah, yes, you you scale the position embedding to a more sixteen k token size. But what about the input sequence embedding itself? The uh, the input uh, can be stretched by just uh, uh, redefining the metric size. So your, your so KQV, uh, your W, you just uh, redefined, it was, since you now count, uh, you want to accommodate 16,000, you, you just redefine the KQV, that's it. Um, but uh, when you actually talking, trained you're it. You're talking about the weights, right? Yeah, yes, so when you trained it, you would have had a 4K, uh, you know, 4K times 4K uh, matrix, right? Um, um, oh, I think what they do is uh, probably they, uh, they, they they continue to send that in, concatenate. They somehow treat that as a one data point. So they, they so for example, you, uh, even though each time you, you can only send 4K, the next 4K somehow use the information from previous 4K, right? I see. I mean, so, just like a recurrent network then almost. Right, right. I believe that's the way to do it. Uh, good question. I need to look into that. <laughs> okay. I need to look into This is so new. This is uh, like only the last two months they made this happen. Sure, like, well, thanks to you. Good question about uh, about the hallucinations. How do you deal practically? Like, if you use this uh, to generate code for you in your programming tasks, how do you? Uh, how often does it, does it do hallucination? And do you have to check every time of your code that it generates? Make sure that there is no hallucination. What's the practical approach here? Yeah, I don't think there's a solution right now. They they. Uh, the the code talk about some safety guard, but uh, you cannot guarantee the code is completely correct. So that's why they say it's assistant. It's not a full fledged coder. It, the hallucination problem has not been solved yet. I believe maybe next uh, next year. Believe maybe in six months or in one year that problem will be pretty much solved. That's my okay. prediction, given the yep. speed. Can can we employ other AI agents to watch after this code and verify? Uh, there are lots of things you can do. Absolutely, anything you can add on top of this. Uh, people are trying that. I, I don't. I definitely think you you can do it. Uh, by the way, we have a Discord channel. I invite you to join our Discord channel. So if you are put in the chat, um. You, I think we should build a community to uh, continue be, beyond the meetup. And I think in the future, I will send an email to the whole meetup to encourage, uh, we are going to build this uh, Discord channel for all of us to, to discuss more. So that's uh, one thing I want to encourage people to do. Another thing uh, I want to mention, is I still have I still have a coaching uh, available if any of you is interested. I have uh, I think one or two one or two uh, opening. 
So if if you're interested, you can uh do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. What I offer is uh, the uh we will have a roadmap call. Um and also uh, every week you should uh, be able to, to uh, meet with me and or even a group, do a group meeting. We will uh, go through the any question you have. And if you during the week you have questions, you can I can uh, also give you uh, answers to follow up. Uh, basically, I will answer within uh, within uh, twenty four hours. Then um, after that, let me see. I need to put this in presentation mode. Um, sorry, wrong wrong slide. This one I will close. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, let me open this up. Okay. Are there a link to these documents, uh, like presentation and uh, um, code? Uh, today's presentation. Y yes, the the links. Um, I don't think. Um, for now, I haven't decided to release the uh, presentation, but the uh, I will record the video, so the video will be online. Is that on YouTube yes. channel? How how do yes. I find video? We, we have a YouTube channel. You can join. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, if any of you is uh, still interested in uh, the coaching part, you can work with me. Let me just uh, explain to you what the coaching is. The um essentially, you 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 uh, for those of you who really want to get deeper into LM, want to know and want to build a product. That's uh, uh what I can help. What you can do is apply here at uh, uh, bit.ly coaching AI slash coaching AI. I'll put this in the chat too. Uh, okay, all right. So that's that's just uh, one thing I want to tell people. Any other questions? So this video on uh, what channel? Is it on YouTube? How, how do I find? Oh, what is our YouTube channel? Yes, well, I needed to uh, actually upload more video there. Let me sh give you the YouTube channel. Um, it should be slash AI Frontiers. Um, let me see. If, uh... Um, where is the our YouTube channel? Let's see. Home. Home. Okay. Just if you Google it, How do I home, find my AI. own uh, channel ID. Yeah, it's AI Frontiers 7351. Just Google it, AI Frontiers. Can you put it in the it's... chat? Yeah. That would be helpful. Thank you. How do I sign up for this um, coaching sessions? Is there like an email or? Uh, you click on that link, Coaching AI. It will uh, lead you to a form. You just fill out the, your contact information and the question. So then you can set up a call with me. Oh, OK. Okay. Are you sure so, the channel is right? Because I don't see her name. The channel 7351. Uh, that is our old conference. Yeah, so wasn't it what you were looking for? <laughs> uh, we have a, a meetup channel. So this is our oh, Air so... Frontiers conference channel. Okay, so you um, want... Let me... AI I builders then, yes, God. Okay, so I have a talk here, a uh, code Nama. Let me, if you click on that one, maybe you will see the channel. Let me show you the link. Where's the link? Okay, okay. Give the title of one of the videos, we can search for that. Okay, I'll give you a YouTube video for from our channels and you can search for, you can then click on below that video. 
So this is the Lama 2 uh, talk. The, and then can someone find out the, the actual channel link? Uh, I can find out. Oh yeah, channel is very simple. <clears throat> yeah, this is our channel. AI, uh, AIM, AI from, Oh, RLHF was RLAIF. Can, can we explain what is RLAIF? <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, reinforcement learning AI feedback as opposed to human feedback. Oh, yeah, it's very hot recently. Um, this basically, what we see is uh, because it saves cost and uh, you've got a very good language model to generate the feedback. It's useful, very useful. And the result is actually not bad. The All the recent uh, from Facebook shows that, uh, I actually commented on that in my LinkedIn. The, um, but the, I think we still need to master RLHF. Yeah, oh, okay, all right. So uh, we end of the, uh, yeah, we are reaching the end of our time. Thanks, thank all of you for joining today. And I hope to run this more frequently so we can meet more often um, doing more cutting edge papers. Okay. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. See, you. see you next time. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>